it is time for the pour. I probably should do this over the sink, but I have faith in myself. That is a lie, but I'm going to try it anyways. I need a countdown. Three, two, one. Oh my God, pretty good. I have my coffee now, so I'm prepared. Hey guys, what's up? It is currently Saturday, and what do we do on Saturdays when we have nothing else to do? Go book shopping, right? It's like a reward for getting through the week. I actually do have a book on hold at Barnes & Noble, which I need to pick up, and I'm really excited for. And then of course, I'm also gonna look around, see if maybe they have some of those new releases that came out this month. I also have a gift card to use today, which is exciting. Now, did I go book shopping last weekend? Yes. And did I bring you guys along with me? Also, yes. Who else would I bring? So as I go drive to Barnes Noble, you guys are gonna time travel back to last weekend when I went to the Green Valley Book Fair. Have fun, I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> We're kind of shooting stars on the side of my bed And now your lips tattooed on the side of my neck Another glass won't kill you, right? Gladly she replies You got me running circles inside of my head Now we're doing everything that I wish you had said Another glass won't kill you, right? All right, I'm now pulled up outside of Barnes & Noble. I've not been to this Barnes & Noble in like a few months, so it'll be interesting to just see and check out their inventory. I hope you guys enjoyed the Green Valley Book Fair. It really is a great place to find books for such great deals. Let's get inside my favorite place in the whole world. Is it? Maybe. We're kind of shooting stars on the side of my bed And now your lips tattooed on the side of my neck Another glass won't kill you, right? Gladly she replies You got me wrong of my head now we're doing everything that i wish you had said another class won't kill you right gladly she replies like Okay, I am back from Barnes & Noble, and we certainly have a haul to go through. I thought I would also show you guys what I picked for my book of the month choice. I'm not sponsored like every other booktuber, but book of the month, hit me up. Love your service. First, let's go through the books I picked up from the bookstores. Starting off with the Green Valley Book Fair, the first book I picked up was You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen M. McManus. Besides this book and Karen's new release, I've actually read her four other releases. I went through a bit of a Karen M. McManus phase back in high school. I did not mess around. I was a Stand. I remember purchasing each of her new releases on release day for like three years. One of Us is Lying, her first book, is actually the book that got me into reading. I think everyone has that one book that they read at one point in their life that made them realize how fucking great reading is. Let me know what book that was for you down in the comments. It's kind of interesting to see which book was the book that basically changed our lives. And now we're all here in this lovely book community of ours. But anyways, I haven't read one of her books in a while, so when I saw one for only $6.99, I thought I'd give it a try and see if the spark is still there. So in this book, we follow three friends who used to be close but aren't anymore. I'm guessing we're gonna find out why in the book. And one day they decide to pull a Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Gotta have one of those. It's like a rite of passage. You have to have at least one in high school. But I'm guessing that they quickly come to regret this because on their day off, they witness another one of their classmates own murder. And then it turns out that these three ex-friends may have more in common than they once thought, including a connection to this now dead student. I also saw Jack Edwards do an interview with Karen and McManus. And that made me remember like, oh yeah, she's an author that I used to really like. Kind of forgot she existed there for a hot minute, but you got me intrigued, Miss McManus. Okay, buying this next book was a bit of a mistake on my part. I picked up Defy Me by Tharia. Oh my god, I cannot pronounce that. This author, I just slandered her name. I am sorry. It's not you, it's me. So this is the eighth book in the Shatter Me series. Have I read the seven other books in the series? 
no. I thought this was the second book, okay? I saw it and I was like, oh, I want to read the Shatter Me series. And since they have the second book for only $5.99, might as well pick it up. Now there's a difference between buying the second book in a series you haven't read anything else from and the eighth book in a series you haven't read anything else from. I guess I'm now in a committed relationship with the Shatter Me series. And I don't even know if I'm going to like these books because I rarely read dystopian or fantasy. So clearly I did not have my thinking cap on when I picked this up. I'm going to make an educated guess here and say that this is probably going to sit on my TBR shelf at least until I read the seven other books in the series. The next book I picked up, you'll never guess, I got another fantasy book. I know, subconsciously I must want to pick up genres that I don't typically read. This book is actually one I've seen at Green Valley before and I've debated on picking up. I finally decided to pick this up because when I do get a fantasy urge, which happens occasionally, I thought I would like this. If there's a way to get me to buy a fantasy novel, market it as a Cinderella retelling and it is coming home with me. I love the nostalgic fairy tale retellings, but especially Cinderella retellings. I didn't even say the name of this book. This is The Blood Spell by C.J. Redwine. Redwin? Red wine? I kind of would like some red wine right now. In this book, we follow Blue, a girl whose life revolves around hiding the magic in her blood that allows her to help the homeless by turning metal into gold. But when her father is murdered and a powerful woman claims custody of her, she's now in a position where one wrong move could expose her secret. The only one that can help her is a boy she has loathed since childhood, Prince Kellen Renard. Prince Kellen has recently returned from boarding school and he must find a bride amongst the kingdom, but soon he is surprised to discover that the one person who makes him feel like he can breathe is blue. Sounds like a bit of an enemies to lover situation. I can definitely see where the Cinderella vibes are coming from with the cruel stepmother and everything. All right, the last book I got from the Green Valley Book Fair I think is gonna be a bit of a controversial one. I picked up after the graphic novel. People either deeply love the after series or despise it. So I have not particularly felt compelled to pick up the books, but I thought that the graphic novel might be a good way to, shall we say, dip my toes into the after world and see if the series and I I could jive. I love the art in here. It's really pretty. Let me know your thoughts on after. Do you love it? Hate it? Think I should give this book away? No, I'm going to read it. I don't know much about this book and I'm going to keep it that way. All I really know is that it's a college romance and I think the guy was like inspired by Harry Styles, something like that. I like Harry. Who doesn't? I'm excited to read this. It seems like a quick read and could make for a fun, trashy afternoon. Moving on to my Barnes & Noble purchases. I've got everything in my tote here. So the book that ignited this whole shopping trip to begin with and the one I on hold because it has literally been selling out everywhere is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I have been looking for this since it came out and I was sitting in class the other day and I randomly started thinking about this book and I had the brilliant idea to check if this was in stock at my Barnes & Noble near my college because previously I only checked the ones near my house and they were of course out of stock so I did and I really thought that they wouldn't have it but to my surprise they did and I placed that hold lightning fast and here we are. I think the internet is going crazy about this book because the name of it is so jarring like most people wouldn't be glad that their mom has died. So the title along with this being from Jeanette McCurdy, an actress I used to watch all the time as a kid, really intrigued me. I feel like reading this will be like watching one of those where are they now segments. So this memoir follows Jeanette's life growing up in the spotlight and her relationship with her overbearing mother and how she kind of took control of her life. I know that this is going to be my next read. I don't pick up nonfiction often so that tells you how excited I am. I'm still shocked that I found it. The next book I picked up is is one of my most anticipated releases for 2022 and one it seems like everyone is picking up right now because we are just all so collectively excited to finish up the Inheritance Game series. This is The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes aka the third novel in the Inheritance Game series. Certain YA series like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Truly Devious, the Inheritance Game series give these uncomparable cozy vibes. I need another series like that because after this what am I going to do? I love the first two books in the series, so I have no doubt that this will be great. I still haven't decided if I'm Team Grayson or Jameson. I liked both and would be happy for Avery with either of them, but I guess if I had to pick one, I think it would be Grayson, which I think is the unpopular opinion. Next, I picked up I Kissed Sahara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston for 50% off. Love those steals. I don't know if this is a romance or a mystery. I've seen it in the romance section, but to me, this sounds more of like a mystery. So in this book, our protagonist is Chloe, whose main goal in high school is to be valedictorian. Her only rival is Sahara Wheeler, but a month before graduation, Sahara kisses her and vanishes. And then as Chloe tries to figure out what happened to Sahara, she discovers that she was not the only one Sahara kissed. So then Chloe and two other guys must untangle Sahara's trail to find her. I'm not gonna lie that the fact that this girl, whoever she is, kind of looks like me, and there's a character named Sahara, Sahara, 
Sarah. Practically the same, right? Might have been the reason why I picked this up. Is that a good reason? To me it is. I also picked up another book that has been another one of my most anticipated releases for 2022, and that is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I am a fish dangling from Taylor Jenkins Reid fishing rod, meaning I am hooked and I will buy any new release she comes out with. And it's even better if that book involves characters from her previous works. So let's just say I was ecstatic to see Carrie Soto is Back at Barnes & Noble. You already know I can't shut up about my love for Malibu Rising, and Carrie Soto was a side character in that novel. This book follows an ex-pro tennis player, Carrie Soto, as she comes out of retirement to train and try to get back her record, even if she has to train with Bao Huntley, a man she once opened her heart to. That was the Cliff Notes version of the synopsis here, but as we all know, TJR books always dive so deep into the characters and the story. Also, thoughts on the cover? I like it. I think it's pretty. I've heard some don't. I might be in the minority there, but I don't have a problem with it. The next book I picked up, yes, I did get because it was all also 50% off. I also looked it up on Goodreads and the majority of people seemed to really hate the ending. They were going at it in the Goodreads comments, but I was like, Goodreads, I don't appreciate you trying to push your opinions on me. I will read this for myself and for my own opinions. Thank you very much. In this thriller, we follow a family as the husband is about to get married again, but first he must divorce his current wife even though she can no longer speak for herself. The daughters, on the other hand, think that the new wife is just after the father's money and they are determined to uncover their family secrets as this new wife closes in and figure out who their father really is. I love myself a domestic thriller, so I need to keep them stocked on my TBR shelf. The last book I got from Barnes & Noble, I also got for 50% off, though I'm not really sure why. I picked up The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. The other books that I got that were half off were part of Barnes & Noble's 50% off select hardcovers promotion. This book I actually found in the Barnes & Noble's clearance section and was with books that looked kind of rough around the edges. Like I saw a copy of The Love Hypothesis there with a chunk missing from its cover, but this book doesn't look beat up at all. Maybe a little bit on the bottom here, but I would definitely still pay full price for this. Do I really even need to go over really what this book is about? I feel like we all already know. This is one of those books that has been out for a while and I have just never got around to reading. So I thought no better time to pick it up. It's half off. Moving on to the books I got in my book of the month. Now these aren't from the September select. Oh God. Now these aren't from the September selection. This is actually the August box. I did get the September box, but it is waiting for me at my parents' house. My apartment complex doesn't do mail very well, so I just ship my packages to my parents. Anyways, my choice book for the month was Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. I've been meaning to read a Karen Slaughter book for a while, so when I saw that this was a choice, I was like, yes, please add to cart. It looks like this thriller follows a detective who is trying to solve a 40-year-old cold case of a girl who got murdered at her prom in the 80s. Yes, this is giving Michael Jackson and Dr. Pepper disco dancing vibes. I think the detective in this book is a character from one of Karen Slaughter's other novels, so I may put this on hold for now until I get around to reading that other book. I also, of course, took advantage of Book of the Month's add-on deal, so I picked up two other books as well. So I picked up The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, and I have been wanting to read this even before this was a Book of the Month choice, so it was a no-brainer when I saw this. This thriller follows Casey, an actress who is trying to escape the press, so she moves into her family's lake house in Vermont, and to pass the time, she decides to yank out her binoculars and spy on the glamorous couple who lives in the house across the lake, because that is not psychopath behavior at all. But one day, the wife vanishes, and Casey immediately assumes that the husband did it. But according to the synopsis, what she doesn't realize is that there's more to the story than meets the eye. I've heard nothing but great reviews about this, literally not a single bad review, and I have been wanting to try out more books from Riley Sager. The only other book by him I've read is Lock Every Door, so I thought this would be a good one. And then the second book I chose is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This is another book I've heard nothing but great things about. I'm really intrigued to read about a character with face blindness, which I didn't even know was a thing until I read the synopsis of this book and then went down a rabbit hole in my research. This thriller follows a couple on their anniversary as they head off to Scotland on a weekend away vacation they want, but there things go wrong and supposedly one of them is lying and someone doesn't want them to live a happily ever after. I'm thinking that this might be like a secluded setting thriller, which I have been yearning for recently. I like the little bookmark book of the month always gives you. This one says read like your TBR is watching. They apparently don't know the trick to not read in the same room as your TBR. You all know I can't end a video without a book stack. I don't think I'll be able to lift this one up though. Here's all the books I ended up picking up. <laughs> Oh man, I think I might I think I think I might have gone a little crazy. But like half at least half these books I got for a good deal though. So
I definitely have a good mix of genres today. Mystery and thriller, YA, dystopian, fantasy, romance, nonfiction, literary fiction. We have it all here. Let me know what book you think I should pick up first. Actually, I'm gonna read this first. Okay, what book should I read after this? That is gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a lot of fun going shopping with my book loving besties. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me my channel out a lot. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.